In fluid mechanics, when we study shear, uh, we break up the fluid into little cubes. And on each of those cubes, we break up the shear uh, into vectors of three components each. Um, and each of those components applies to one of the six faces of a cube. So we, we end up with um, drawings like this one here, where we have every time on each of the six faces of the cube, three components of shear. And one of those is very strange. It is a component of shear every time that is perpendicular to the area, tau xx, tau yy, and tau zz. Um, so how can this be? How is it possible that there is shear perpendicular to a surface? If I take here a cube, and this by approximation would be a cube, a plastic box, um, if I try to shear perpendicular to some area, it's not gonna work. I can shear in this direction or that direction, but how could I shear through the side of the cube? The answer is, uh, on the size of a plastic box, it's not possible to shear through the surface. So it doesn't work that way. But in a fluid, when we take this cube, this cube is traversed by fluid. Fluid flows through the cube. It's just an imaginary frame, an imaginary piece of volume that we identify inside the fluid. But the fluid passes through. And if the fluid passes through and it has shear associated to it at that point, it is quite possible that the shear points in a direction um, that has some component that is perpendicular to the plane of the cube. Yes. So if we look at this cube here, when we think about shear as it applies to the mass of fluid that is inside the cube, we have to think that there is a flow through each of the faces of that cube. It's not a solid box around which the fluid will have to flow. It is a frame through which the fluid will flow. If the fluid flows through, then the shear that's applying locally may well have a component that's perpendicular to the plane. So here you are. This is the story behind tau xx and the shear perpendicular.